Warning: Phenolphthalein is carcinogenic, possibly toxic to reproduction, and like phenol suspected of being able to cause genetic defects. Phenol is also toxic by ingestion, inhalation and skin contact, and like sulfuric acid, sodium hydroxide and phthalic anhydride corrosive. Phthalic anhydride is sensitizing by skin contact and inhalation. Ethanol is highly flammable. This experiment should only be performed by an experienced chemist outdoor or in a fumid using proper gloves. A dust mask should be worn while working with dry phenolphthalein. A correct way of deposition should be chosen. Hello and welcome to one of my new videos. Today I want to show you how to synthesize phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is commonly used in the labs as an indicator by acid and base titrations. First, in this kind of aperture with a condenser to prevent uh, vapors coming out, start with 4.7 grams of phenol and add to it 3.7 grams of phthalic anhydride. These are one equivalent of phthalic anhydride and two equivalents of phenol. You can scale up if you want more um, phenolphthalein. Then add to it 3 milliliters of concentrate 96% sulfuric acid. Turn on stirring and heating. So now you have to melt your mixture until it becomes liquid and deep red. What's happening is that the phenol combines in a multi-step process with a phthalic anhydride to form phenolphthalein. First, the phthalic anhydride is protonated and has a possibility to bind with a phenol. This process is repeated. A molecule of water is produced which is also absorbed by the sulfuric acid. So the sulfuric acid acts two times as a catalyst. First, it helps the reaction going because without you wouldn't be able to combine phenol with phthalic anhydride. And second, it dehydrates the, the whole thi thing. So I think we are done. Mostly all phenol and phthalic anhydride is consumed. There are a few crystals on the wall which I try to get into the solution. And you see this deep red color which comes from the phenol phthalene in an extremely acid condition because sulfuric acid is a very strong acid and it's concentrates so it protonates very strongly the phenol phthalene and the protonated form is deep red. So for best efficiency let the whole mixture react for 15 to 30 minutes. You can also let it stir overnight but I don't have the time and it isn't very necessary. But if you want nearly 90% efficiency you should do, do this. So you can see the droplets on the wall of the flask due to the condensation uh, during the reaction. And now what you have to do is to add about 75 milliliters of distilled water to it. So the phenolphthalein precipitates out, gives his, its proton to the water so the red form disappears, and the unreacted phenol and phthalic anhydride goes into solution so you can separate it separate them from the phenolphthalein. So now you have to vacuum filtrate your suspension and the residue in the, the filter paper is your phenolphthalein. Since it's crude you have to wash it with some water 
to dissolve remaining phenol and phthalic anhydride. If you want highly pure phenolphthalein, you have to recrystallize it in ethanol, but this one should be enough pure to, for titrations and indicators pure purposes. So here is your crude phenolphthalein. It's still pink because of remaining phenol and phthalic anhydride, but this won't disrupt you while titrating because the phenolphthalein will be diluted to 1 up to 0.1%, so the color doesn't remain in the solution. To test it, take a little bit of it, add to it some ethanol to dilute it, and put in some sodium hydroxide solution, and it will become pink. Thanks for watching.